This is the Hi-Tech X2 AC Pro Multi Charger. It's an AC-DC dual port charger slash dish charger that delivers 200 watts of total power in AC mode and up to 300 watts power in DC. X2 AC Pro is also equipped with a built-in soldering iron up to 60 watts and it's got an adjustable temperature of up to 840 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this is definitely a more high-end hobbyist charger with a good build quality and extra perks as well as essential battery diagnostic features that whether you're a beginner or an advanced user you're going to love it. When you unbox the charger you'll receive a soldering iron that goes with it shown here with the flat and the pencil tip as well as some connectors to solder on your favorite plugs. If you don't want to solder those on, just be prepared to buy pre-made XT60, Dean's EC3, whatever connector you like to use. You can usually pick those up for like $2 pre-made. So if you don't want to solder, that's just fine. But it comes with them, so you can do so. It comes with a very detailed manual that I would definitely encourage reading or thumbing through at least once. It's very well written. Uh, and last but not least, you get high-tech standard universal balancing board that works with all major brands of battery chemistry, as well as a simple LiPo balancing board here that does up to six cell. So. Charging a battery with the X2 AC Pro is really easy because high-tech software is intuitive. So to start, you just press the Bat Program button and then select the battery type. In this case, it's a LiPo because we're using a 1.3 or 1300 milliamp hour 3 cell LiPo. So we pick that from the menu and these are the various options you can choose. It's not all, but I'm just going to pick LiPo and now we're going to choose the type of charge. This is LiPo balance charge, mass charge, regular charge, storage charge. Well, we're just going to do a regular balance charge. And then we, when we hit enter, we can choose the amount of amps. Since I want to charge this battery at 1C right now, I'm going to put it at 1.3 amps. You just hold it down to make it go faster. You can just hammer the button and do one by one. And then finally, we choose our cell count. This is a three cell battery. By the way, this is channel A. The left side is channel A. The right side is channel B. So that's it. We should be ready to charge now. And hit enter to confirm the cell count. And then hit enter again. It'll do a battery check to make sure that what I entered is correct. And hit enter. And we're charging. Now during the charge, you can see all kinds of statistics. You can see the individual cell counts and you can get a total percentage of what's remaining left to charge. And you get the end voltage, temperature, temperature cutoffs, all sorts of great settings and statistics. All right, and to stop the charge at any time, all you have to do is press stop. Now, if you want to create battery profiles so you don't have to enter the information in every single time, you can do that too. Just press the battery program button. Now I'm going to cycle all the way through to battery memory. Now I already have battery memory one. I have the LiPo saved with a setting of 3.3 amps and three cells. And you have, you can enter the sets from here, but you have up to 10 slots and that's for both channel A and channel B each one has up to 10 different configurations per channel so that's a total of 20 different battery profiles to choose a profile that you have saved you just hold down hit enter and it's applied and if you want to cycle between the channels just press this button here and that's about it and then you choose the profile and you're ready to go it literally takes seconds once you've set up your profiles and you put your common battery types that you 
prefer to use into this system. You can achieve up to 200 watts in AC mode and 300 watts in DC. Depending on how you choose to allocate the power, different channels will have different levels of watt. So to configure this, you go to the battery program button. And I got LiPo Bat, cycle through until you go to system setting, then find the wattage. There we go. Now you can increase the power on one channel and it will take away power from the other naturally. You can put it all the way up and allocate all, all, all the oops, I'll get all the power up to 200 watts. And now you have full power on channel A, or you can balance it out and have half and half. Choice is completely yours. And this is on AC power. When you have DC, you've got 150 watts for both of the channels to work with. If you want to even them out or just send 300 all to one. And once you save it, you're just out, and now both channels are set to 100 watts. You can check the total resistance as well as the resistance of each cell in a battery. From the BAT program menu, choose BAT Resistance and hit Enter. It'll do a check on the battery, and then it will display to you the resistance in milliohms of each cell. In this case, all of my cells, cell 1, 2, 3 on the battery on channel A, has 7 milliohms for each cell. The others are 0 because they're, this does up to 6 cells and we've only got 3 on this. So let's check the cells for the other one. Well, we got a little bit of inconsistency with it, but still within good ranges. Um, the, the higher the milliohms, the worse your resistance is, the worse the battery is for performance. As a general rule, a per cell rating between, should be between 0 to 6 milliohms. That's good. Um, between 7 to 12 milliohms is reasonable, and 12 to 20 is when you might want to think about retiring the battery pack, especially if it isn't performing as well as it used to. Um, this will give you your total. This is the total milliohm uh, resistance with all those cells added up together. Uh, resistance checking is extremely important to be sure you're not only getting quality batteries, but also to keep tabs on their performance throughout their lifetime. If you want to know what's going on with your batteries, if you want to know that you're getting a quality product when you buy it, you can check the resistance and see what's happening and you'll be better informed as to when to retire or toss a battery out. There's no hard, there's not necessarily a hard rule about what's a bad level, but the, generally the higher the resistance, the worse it's going to be. So it's a good idea to check, and, and oh, and I noticed it will fluctuate sometimes depending on uh, when you run it, but it won't be by much. Like I think it was 777 before, and now it's six six seven. This is that's normal. All right, and that's about it. And this is how you check the resistance of your batteries. Many chargers do not have this feature, or they'll just tell you the total resistance of the battery itself, and they won't let you see if one cell has an absolutely terrible resistance compared to another. So again, this is a very useful feature to be able to not only see the total resistance, but to get the per cell resistance as well. So some final thoughts. This is my daily use charger and I would highly recommend it for its simplicity and ease of use. The first thing I would do when you get it is to disable the beep sounds when you change between menus or change uh, between the settings because they can get really annoying. Mine is not making any noise and you can easily disable that from the system menu. The 200 watts of power is really great and sure you can get much higher wattage from DC based setups where you need to purchase an external power supply and all that. 
but I'm mainly charging batteries at 1C. You know, I've got the 1300 milliamp hour Turnkey batteries and Chroma batteries. So I'm not really looking to charge these at, uh, you know, a ridiculously high amperage. Uh, for these batteries, I'm not really charging them any more than either 1C or if I want to go fast, I'll charge them at 4.3 amps because I can have two of these batteries charged in a total of 15 minutes. So I can go all day long because it takes about seven minutes per battery with my Vortex 250 Pro to use them. So total about 14 minutes to fly and then you know, in 15 minutes you're done. So I'm ready to go with my next two packs because of the dual charging setup. Um, if there's one disadvantage to this charger is that the fans are kind of loud. They do keep the unit cool, but you might not want to deal with the loud fan. Um, there's also no on and off switch on this charger, so I would recommend plugging it into a uh, power strip so you can just press the button on and off because you don't want to leave it on all the time and unplugging and pulling it back in can get really old. So that's why I have mine on a power strip and that's probably for the best anyway to avoid any power surges wrecking your unit. So that concludes the review. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I'll try to answer it. Um, thanks for watching.